Welcome back already, let's play Sundo Square Pants, Revenge of the Flying Dutchman for the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, I actually remembered the title that time. We're gonna head on, on to the next chapter, having completed the first one, that being walk, um, Walking the Plank, I believe. Now we're gonna start off on Out and About. Not a very interesting name, but oh well. We're gonna head on over to Russell Beach. I hate this place's music because I hate this place, actually. The music's fine, I think, but... I hate using it, hate music by association. So, do keep in mind that last episode we got these very wonderful boots. If you're wondering what this says, it just says you can glide, which is something you're taught in the first level, but whatever. So now that we have these boots, everything's gonna be a lot easier, actually, for the most part. And this is why I hate this level. Freaking clams. Just flying around everywhere. They always hit me. Thankfully, I have extra maximum health, so that may help me if I can come across, come across enough health in the first place. Uh, and of course, platforming is going to be easier because I can jump around too, and I can run. But uh, you might notice that this is here. I can't actually break that. And if you re enter this area, well, sometimes, well, yeah, you'll find that there's no way to bring a strong bolt back into here. Because. There's no strong bubble in this area, and there is in the next area, but the uh, you can't get back to this area without picking up a normal bubble. So what do you do? You do that. That has to hurt like crazy, but whatever. So not only are the clams function as giant clams function as platforms, they also shoot you at stuff, whether that be good or bad. Why well, slick before you get eaten by those things? Sea dragon monster thing. Now, naturally, falling into the goo is instant death. Which is another reason why I dislike this level so much. Yeah, there we go. That was that normal bubble that I was talking about earlier. Is, there no, is the picture on the normal bubble just supposed to be a bubble? It always looked to me like it was some kind of... It's not spherical. It's always weird me out. Anyways, it's Sandy. And apparently she can just break rocks. It'd be very nice if we were actually able to break things with our strong enough ourselves. That would actually have solved our little issue last episode where we had to backtrack a lot with a uh, strong bubble. Speaking of strong bubble. By the way, if you're curious what strong bubble does to worms, Stop, jerk! I like how I can blow a bubble through the wall. It just makes them jump back into the wall. In the ground, they don't die or anything. No. What's annoying about the worms is actually when they jump in, in and out of the ground, because their spikes are so large when they do so. By the way, no, these sea dragons never go full in the water. Although, they will sometimes move quite quickly in a conveyor fashion, so it's easier to... it's easy to fall. How have I not gotten hit by any clams? That's something that always happens. That's actually what I dislike about this level in pretty much its entirety. And more clams out of the glide. Why did I not? I, I don't know if it's game being unresponsive or what, but I did not glide. I'm fully open to the idea that it's me screwing up, not the game one. I don't glide while I'm trying to, but I'm sure I'm holding the keys down all the way. I don't think my keys are that bad. I mean, my S key seems to kind of suck sometimes, and it likes me not actually do things when it gets crossed, but I'm not having issue issues with my S key in this game, I'm having issues with my right key, my right arrow key, which I don't normally have issues with. By the way, you don't want to get eaten by that clam, for obvious reasons, with that, uh, jellyfish right there. You know the difference between giving bad clams to be eaten by, I guess. Unless you're just into that sort of thing. Let's 
See, if you want to jump higher, just does us wonders. If you want all the doubloons, you do not want to go into that clam. So you'll miss a number of them. Otherwise, you can just get um, eaten by that clam and take the hit from this jellyfish right here. I don't know why it is that jellyfish become really transparent when you uh, put them in bubbles, but it's actually kind of cool, I think, that it's going to use transparency like it does. You don't see transparency very often in GBA games at all. So it's really fancy looking. Just by comparison. Whoa! I was not hit by a worm. Because for some reason, just touching things in video games hurts you. I don't know why dogs simply touching you would hurt you like that, but oh well. Whoa! Don't make me lose all that rust to pick it up. I would like to savor my ability to uh, have more than five pairs of underwear on at any given time. I've had lots of close calls in this episode, in this level, actually. I didn't get hit. What? Dragon. Actually, you don't want to get eaten by this thing. I did get hit. Oh well. But, for life refills, we have the Jellyfish Rodeo! And if you're only always read the directions for Jellyfish Rodeo, it's not my own choice. It does it automatically. Whenever you walk up to a new sign, it just automatically makes you read it as you touch it. The thing I haven't mentioned yet, actually, that I think really deserves a mention, is how awesome this the Jellyfish Rodeo looks. And look at the sides. Like the coral on the side. It looks incredibly three-dimensional. I've never actually seen something look that good on a GBA. And even without the filter that I have on right now, it still looks incredible. I will turn off that filter right now just so you can see. And you're going to be looking at this at a really high resolution, but still. Look at this. It's still really nice looking. And I feel like we're playing GB games without filter now, I'm so used to them. But people apparently don't like me using them, so whatever. I could understand why people would want to see the original game without any kind of filter on it, but at the same time, apparently people just think that stuff looking nice is nice, so whatever. And this game works really well without that one particular filter that I usually use, so. This rodeo makes me sad, you can only get three lives from it. Thankfully, though... I did exactly that. I almost did a perfect run-through, too. Well, I got hurt at one point, at the end. So many things in this game that just look really nice with this filter on. Most GBA games don't do that. I, there are lots of GBA, GBA games where things still look really pixelated. I don't know how this filter works, but it works wonderfully. Like, that little life icon in the bottom left corner, like, corners are still corners. I guess it just blends things if they're of a light color, or something like that. And only if they're light color, and if they're a different color, it doesn't blend them, or something like that. Whatever it is, it looks really nice. Like, see, the this right here, where the colors vary a lot, like, they're a lot darker and a lot lighter. You're a lot more pixelated than it is right here, but behind SpongeBob's back, where they're of similar color, and thus they're really, uh, like, blurred together. Don't forget, I nice support chests. Knives are nice to have, too. Family photo album. Fancy. Anyways, that didn't take all that long, actually. So, under the boardwalk it is, then. This place, I don't like the music here. I don't... It's not because I dislike the level, I just don't like the music here. Well, I don't really like the environment, either. 
If there's any one complaint I have about this game's, like, visual presentation, it's that the red caves are really overused. And this level is nothing but red caves. With the music I find kind of unpleasant and unfitting and annoying. I can see what they're going for, like, in, like, deep, scary caves. But still. Seems like a fitting place to go treasure hunting, but still. Also be aware that there is actually a doubloon right here where I'm standing right now. Oh yeah, right there that I just now picked up. There's a doubloon there that <laughs> you can't see. It's in the air that you can pick up. It's really easy to miss. Last time I did a practice play through this area, I actually uh, picked it up completely by accident when I went back into that uh, little nook. And I went, huh, very good thing I picked that up. So. Lots of, like, 20-eyed creatures in this place, but thankfully they're really easy to put up with. So the reason I'm doing this chapter before Jellyfish Builds a Rapper uh, is mostly just because of the item you get here. I think that the item you get from Jellyfish Fields Forever is the least practical out of all of them. Even though uh, they're all practical to some extent, I just think that this one's more practical. The one you get in uh, Jellyfish Fields Forever. Because the item you get in Jellyfish Fields Forever lets you do something that you can usually do anyways. And even when you can't, it's usually not, not a serious actual issue. I had a lot of trouble in this run. Yeah. See right there why I jumped and I just like didn't move up in the air anymore? I, I wasn't like tapping the key, I was holding the key. For some reason, in that one area right there, it took me about eight tries to make this jump last time when I was practicing. Just because of how the jump seems to bug out. Oh, you're having that problem either. I played this on the actual GBA, but that might just be my memory failing. Where is it these spikes came from? I don't know. Jellyfish, kind of fittingly enough, have really big hitboxes. Like, surprisingly big hitboxes on their bottom. Uh, where their stingers are. Do be wary of their stingers. For some reason, it felt necessary to stick more destroyable rocks right there. What kind of bubble? You know, most of the things that Bubbles do in this game are kind of make some amount of sense, like bouncing on a bubble or encasing something in a bubble. A bubble floating upwards. I don't get the strong bubble in this game, but strong bubble just like wrecks everything. Yay! I see bounce bubble, it makes sense at least that you bounce on a bubble. If you want, you can actually go all the way left and take the bounce bubble up there, but you're not supposed to do that, so it'll be really hard if you try. I might end up going a little bit under the episode time, I'm not sure, because this is a decently length whoa, level. Don't try to jump over that guy. It's not actually... The collisions for the wall are kind of wonky there. It's not as possible as it looks. Do. Alright. Exactly what I said about earlier, actually, about I'm not going through there. I'm not going to the left. I think I should do that. I was thinking of, the, of that next stream, actually, I said that... Trying to go there with a bounce level will only bring you pain. What does the bounce level bring me here? Does it bring you nothing? So it might actually bring me nothing. Look, I do practice playthroughs to make myself better when I actually do stuff on camera. Oh no! Actually, I hit by one of those. I didn't hit by any of them, not last play through. Well, yeah, I did, never mind. It's easy to avoid them, at least. Especially, which is especially nice when they're everywhere. But, uh, it sounds like me a perfect player when I've actually rehearsed a level once that day.
Yeah, you can totally go up there if you want. Like this. And just keep going from there, but it's really difficult and you're not supposed to, so... You'll miss out on stuff over here if you do that, so... I'm really not making much use of, making much use of my whole, uh... Six hours on our thing, am I? And when I start out with three underwear, it's kind of hard to. Darn it. Yeah, you miss out on this key right here too if you actually try to if you don't come over to this corner, so it's kind of required. Duh. Friggin' boots betraying me. I have 18 lives, I didn't realize that. Wow. I say I die a lot less when I actually know what I'm doing. I only really die a lot actually on that. Ah, right next to Alf. And that level I just completed actually, uh, Muscle Beach. I usually die a lot on that. Particularly both to the goo and. Oh, you just put like that sliver, that's okay. Um. Both to the clams, because they always catch me off guard for some reason. And to uh, what? Both to the clams and to the goo. So. so I see that I'm sucking a little bit less though. Oh yeah, this is this kind of sucks right here. I thought this was here, but I want to do it anyways. So you can't move if you're crouching on a bubble. Like, you can't crawl. Oh man, I did it on the first try. That took me about ten last time. Jumping to that little nook as... a crouched sponge is difficult. And for some reason there are rock bottom enemies here. I don't know why, but whatever, I guess. I really do like, though, that uh, you have different backgrounds and like sets of enemies and whatnot for the different... Uh, Jellyfish Rodeos, and they put effort. This is a game that had put effort put into it, even if it's not the most fun to play, and that one well, of the most important aspects, that being the platforming, is kind of wonky and really annoying, actually. At least to me, because I find control speed suck. Uh, I still think that it's clear that, at least in a no number of ways, uh, particularly the presentation, effort went into the game. And all the sprites are really well done. Especially for certain things like, uh, Sunchop's friends, that look friggin' 3D. The levels look nice, generally speaking. There's different music for every single level. I mean, bosses all have the same music, and, uh, main games all have the same music. Aside from that, every level has its own music. Uh, you have different backgrounds every time for Jellyfish Rodeo. Jellyfish Rodeo itself looks absolutely beautiful. But, oh, and now I read this. Okay. 21 lives. Beautiful. You can't uncrouch in midair. It's just very annoying when you want to glide. Which is pretty much always. Oh, I... Yeah, you stand on there, Spongebob. I won't complain, I guess. You just stand on spikes while well, acting totally impervious to them. No. Okay. Give me a health refill, too. Nothing over there of interest, nothing over there of interest. Hi, Sandy. What are you doing just like standing in a, a deep cave? And for some reason we can step into the beach from here, even though we've been going really deep into a cave the whole darn time. That makes me wonder this is where this is located. Wonder where. Well, whatever. <laughs> I just got my face eaten by a giant big monster, it's fine. Mercy Invincibility is fun. 
guess I really am making use of that extra health now. I should have actually told you they got extra health instead of me just going at one point. Oh, hey, I have more health than normal. Wonder why that is. No, well, I was thinking I, get, I would get hit by the steam, but whatever. I don't know why the, there are random steam nozzles in this place, but whatever. Make some more noise trying to get past these jellyfish, though. Run on through here. Get the key, and we can finish this place up. I think... I'm not sure how long I've been recording this episode for, actually, because so I wasn't... I'm not sure what time I stopped the last episode out. But, don't miss any of those doubloons! Oh, I'm floating. Cool. <laughs> because you can't go back up there without literally going back through the entire level. That leg. It's like gym encrusted. But I have a little bit of time left, so I'm going to take on uh, the challenge. And I'll give us a little preview of what ability we will unlock next time. Or what, well, what abil new ability we'll be able to use next time that is, actually. And the next next time, next episode's level is actually my favorite in the whole game. It's the only level I don't, like, hate playing to some degree or another. But first, there were a little challenge. Yep, now we can actually chop stuff. And it's kind of awkward, because... They're falling from the sky, and you swipe forwards. No, I can't run. And they bounce once they hit the ground, and you can still hit them when they're bouncing. Unless they actually hit you. If an acorn hits you, it stuns you, and then you can't hit that acorn anymore. Even if you actually swing on it properly. And if you miss any of these, you need to wait for, for time to run out if you don't get the level. And then you need to actually, uh... Just restart the whole thing. You have to do it perfectly. It's not that hard though, as you saw. Let me tell me once again how to use an item. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this episode of Let's Play uh, Sword of Squarepants, Revenge of the Flying Dutchman for the GBA. Next episode, we take on Sideshow SpongeBob, which is actually my favorite level in this game by far. Followed by an yet another boss battle, exciting things all around. I'm not sure if, that's, if this is that long of a level, I don't think it is, but that's probably part of why I like it. Yeah, whatever. It's just, I, it's, it's kind of what it sounds like. It's a fun day at the carnival. Look forward to like, look forward to that. And then we have a fun boss battle afterwards. Lots of drama and stuff. Yeah. See you next time, guys, when all those exciting things happen. And at some point or another, we'll unlock the final ability. We're actually getting through this game a lot more quickly than I expected to. Even though it's still a short game. Whatever. Bye, guys. See you next time.